Welcome to this online video lecture on multimodal communication. This lecture is a thematic introduction to the first year bachelor class with the same title, offered for the study course Communication Information Studies at the University of Groningen. My name is Janina Wildfeuer. I teach this class together with Ilka van der Sloys, the coordinator, and I will be guiding you through this lecture and the slides. The whole lecture is based on the textbook Multimodality by John Bateman, Tvo Mohipala and me myself. The link given in the slides guides you to the ebook version provided by the Ruch Library. In the following lectures, we will particularly focus on part one and two of this book in order to understand the complexity of multimodal communication, mostly in terms of theory and methodology. The use case chapters in part three of this book serve to provide examples throughout all lectures and sessions. While there are already many approaches and tools for multimodal analyses available, we highlight on page one of this book that we rather need to become tool makers than just tool users. That means that we start at a very foundational level of description to look at multimodal meaning making and set out theoretical distinctions and methodological steps for productive analyses. We will do this in five lectures that are similarly based on five chapters of the book. Since this is a mostly theoretically oriented introduction to multimodal communication, chapter five and six of the book are not taken into further consideration. They provide clear methods and statistical basics for the empirical analysis of multimodal artifacts and performances and are therefore similarly important and we recommend to have a closer look at these chapters whenever possible. The aim of this first lecture is to give you a better understanding of what exactly multimodality is and why it might be beneficial to know more about it. We will also discuss some typical cases of multimodality from our daily life and more professional contexts. In these times, we find ourselves more than ever in highly complex multimodal situations. When sitting in front of a computer screen and listening to this lecture, when attending online sessions of our classes, or when you're just getting informed about newest developments in our world, then you are interacting with multimodal media and communicating multimodally. But you do so too in a non-digital environment of reading a book, listening to a talk or presentation, or talking to someone face to face. In all these situations, various forms of expressions operate to communicate some meaning. We therefore define multimodality as a way of characterizing communicative situations, considered very broadly, which rely upon combinations of different forms of communication to be effective. And here are a few more examples. The TV program uses spoken language, pictures and text. A book uses written language, pictures, diagrams, page composition and so on. Talking to a friend in the cafeteria brings together spoken language with a host of bodily capabilities and postures. And the computer game might show representations of any of these things and include movement and actions as well. This definition already includes several of the terms we will define in further detail in these lectures. The broad context of communicative situations and their classification. The various forms of communication which are then defined as semiotic modes. And their complex forms of combinations in various media. These combinations, the interplay of modes in a multimodal ensemble, are in fact the main focus of our interest. Interestingly, in the past, many traditional disciplines that were interested in one of the situations just mentioned, such as media studies analyzing TV programs and films, had rather focused their attention on their very own objects of analysis, mostly ignoring combinations with other modes or communication forms. Yet, multimodality is an extremely interdisciplinary phenomenon, and we can see this when looking at several examples from several disciplines. 
For linguistics, an utterance such as can you please pass the salt is not only interesting in terms of the words used or the syntactical structure of the sentence, but also with regard to the intonation and pausing used by the speaker when uttering the question or the gestures he or she might be using. Gesture studies, on the other hand, is and should of course be interested in the accompanying words and utterances that are produced simultaneously. Another interesting question might be the choice of clothes or the facial expressions that go hand in hand with the gesture in question. Media studies and journalism are of course looking at images and text brought together in news messages on several channels. This screenshot of a tweet about the military convoy in Bergamo is only one small example of combinations of images and texts in the media. Here also accompanied by hashtags and several other functions of the Twitter medium. Further examples come from comic studies, where the layout of a comic page with expressive forms such as page layout, colors, lines, etc. are interesting. Or from film studies with both audio and video resources producing meaning. Each of these diverse situations draws potentially on different disciplinary backgrounds, picking out facets of a situation that actually needs to be seen as a unified multimodal activity in its own right. We see the understanding of how these activities become or are unified as one of the primary challenges for appropriate notions of multimodality. We cannot predict the combinations of modes which will be which we will be confronted with. We therefore need methods and conceptual tools that will support us wherever we need to go. Or in short, we need to have a better understanding of just what the multi and multimodality might be referring to. Just what is being combined when we talk of combinations of diverse communicative forms. In recent years, the interest in these combinations has been grown massively and multimodality has been seen as a cultural phenomenon, mostly due to what is today called supermedia. Supermedia are media that are able to display and simulate other media. For example, when a website plays some music embedded via a video. With supermedia, we have media that are capable of doing the jobs of many other media a phenomenon that is also called media convergence. Not only as a cultural phenomenon, but also as an issue for educational contexts, multimodality has now been of particular interest in the areas of literacy and pedagogy. And important aspects of multimodal meaning making are implemented in school curricula, for example. This all shows a certain willingness and, more importantly, a need to explicitly and, in particular, systematically analyze multimodality in further detail, in and across all disciplines. What does this actually mean? It means that we have to find out more about the fundamental properties of multimodal meaning making. These are the patterns of meaning combination, or as it has been called, meaning multiplication, the elements combined, which are the semiotic modes of multimodal ensembles, and the specific communicative situations and media in which these semiotic modes are used. And we can define these communicative situations and media properly. Let's take another closer look. You find yourself in a situation like this, watching the video of this lecture, talking to people in an online class or via a video chat. Communication in these situations is based on several aspects, such as aspects of spoken language. What kind of language dialect do I use? Aspects of visual design of the slides. How are they designed and put together? Aspects of the interaction between the speaker and the slides. Aspects of the programs running on the devices, etc., etc. Researchers from the multimodality context, such as Gunter Kress and Theo van Leeuwen, who are seen as the founding fathers of this research area, have called this multiple articulations, 
that together construct the meaning communicated in these situations. Since the various aspects are dependent on each other and mutually influence each other, Jay Lemke and others call this process of meaning construction meaning multiplication. Meaning is not simply made once, but in various ways of combination that strongly interrelate and cannot be separated from each other. Taking this as a first step of analyzing multimodality, a next step is then also to identify the elements in these combinations. What is multiplied or combined in a specific artifact or performance? Look again at these slides here. All elements in these slides have a specific function and are put there intentionally. The color red, for example, has the function of representing the corporate design of Unigroningen in the logo and also with the red shape on top. In some other contexts, the color red may have a completely different function, namely that of indicating danger or a stop or a prohibition, for example. If we add a red circle and line to the right image here, its meaning changes completely and might let you understand that coffee drinking is not allowed during this video lecture. It's thus important to look at the specific context in which a specific mode or semiotic element, such as the color red, is used. Red here has two different functions, depending on the very combination with other modes and elements. In a multimodal ensemble, each of these combinations has to be analyzed individually. This also means that we have to look closer at each situation and the medium in which these modes appear and are combined. It is not only necessary to ask for the modes, but also to find out which activities are involved in which media, who is actually doing what and how in which role. The communicative situation for this video lecture is, for example, a remote situation in which I, as the lecturer, cannot talk to you face to face and where you only see parts of my body movements and facial expressions in a video which is recorded. This video is therefore not as transient as the exchange in a live presentation in a classroom or study room, where a group of observers can directly interact with the lecturer. In total, as we point out in our book, knowing how to go about investigating how such ensembles of expression work then becomes a fundamental skill for dealing with information presentation and representation in the modern age. Because the modern age is packed with a huge diversity of multimodal phenomena produced by old and new media technologies that operate on all levels of communication we are currently using. All disciplines connected to these levels of communication are therefore developing a similarly huge diversity of research questions and approaches to the analysis of multimodal communication, unfortunately often with little use of regularities or shared sources. It is thus an important step now to make knowledge about the understanding of these phenomena and their ways of meaning making available for all of them. This is what we will do and follow in the following lectures. We will learn more about useful statements and analyses of multimodal forms and styles, with a deeper understanding of how multimodality operates on all levels of communication, and thus for all disciplinary and interdisciplinary endeavors. In this spirit, thank you for your attention and see you for lecture two.